It's a bantamweight homecoming for Peter Caballero as he takes on Sam Guardiola at Fury FC 61 on UFC Fight Pass. But first, we get things going with our Facebook prelims broadcast live from the Burt Ogden Arena in Edinburgh. It's time for these fighters to unleash the Fury. And welcome in. I'm Raheel Ramzanali, joined by the black belt himself, Michael Alexander. Alex Morano is not here with us today. And man, what a fun way to get these prelims going. Yeah, a lot of local talent here. Let's see if their nerves hold up on this amateur car in this big, huge Bird Octon Arena. And so many local guys, and we'll get this going right now with the third member of our broadcast team. Let's go inside the cage to Wayne Leggett. Edinburgh, Texas, we are live from the Bird Ogden Arena for Fury FC 61. Caballero versus Guardiola. But first, please welcome to the cage for your opening contest, Emmanuel Garcia. All right, Emmanuel Garcia, 1-0, fighting out of Corpus Christi. Weapons at hand, MMA. Also trained a little bit at Narvice BJJ. And the nerves, as you mentioned, has, you know, it might be ramped up a little bit, man. Awesome arena. First fight of the night on our prelims. Can't wait to see these guys show what they have. Yeah, and Emmanuel has a great nickname also, the Hellhound. You know, he's 1-0, but in these amateur competitions, you just never know how much experience comes with that. These guys are brand new to this, maybe not new to the sport, but brand new to the cage. Uh, this is, even though he's got one fight, it does give him a significant advantage uh, as far as that goes over his opponent who is making his debut. Yeah, it's so different, uh, you know, when you have the nerves of the crowd, the pressure of not only yesterday with the weigh-ins and then today with the check-in, it's a lot different than the smokers that they might be, you know, uh, alleged smokers that they might be used to competing at where it's almost just show up, right? Yeah, and this, you know, you're not going to find any of those guys at Fury Fighting Championship. You know, all these guys are, uh, you know, Richard Burmaster and Eric Garcia are finding top-level competition, even at the amateur level. They're noticing who's, you know, they know everybody in this area, so they're noticing, they're hearing who's doing great and who these guys want to see in the cage, and they're, you know, doing a good job of making these matchups. Man, it's going to be so much fun to get this going, and don't forget, we are going to be live on UFC Fight Pass at 4.30. We've got a stacked uh, prelim card for everyone. Emmanuel Garcia. There's going to be a lot of local competition. And what I mean by that is, of course, there's a lot of local fighters, but we've got a lot of local schools going at it as well. Those gyms, you know, they love competing and they love saying they're the best in the area. Yeah, and the vibe's a little different down here, Raheel. These guys don't seem to like each other that much. You know, you usually see some cross training in DFW in Houston, uh, where we're from, but down here, there doesn't seem to be a lot of that. It seems that these guys like the competition. They like not liking each other. And, you know, a lot of familiar faces down here. Of course, Roger Navarez in the corner uh, of Emmanuel Garcia, a former UFC uh, competitor. Just some top level guys down here at his gym. Please welcome to the red corner, Enrique Larabas. And Enrique Larabas making the first walk to the Fury FC cage. First time ever. This is his amateur debut. So uh, everything we just mentioned as a second fight for Enrique, or Emmanuel, excuse me, ramped up for Enrique. This is his amateur debut. Yeah, and you know, he looks the part. He's, uh, he's a big uh, 155er. He's not big as far as muscle goes. He's not a he's not a very big framed 155er, but he's six foot tall, which is significantly taller at five foot six than his opponent. He's gonna have a six inch height advantage. Any of that time, any of that kind of thing. Actually, this dude's carrying a lot of muscle. <laughs> yeah, well, he weighed in at 153 yesterday. So yeah, yeah so probably, yeah. probably as his pro as his career progresses, let's see how he does at 155. His coach probably told him to fight at a comfortable weight at 155 with your amateur debut. Easily, this guy can make 145. It looks like. I was gonna say he, he could definitely trim up a little bit more if he wanted to. But you're right. It's that experience of making sure you get your weight cut down. You get that. That, that formula perfected so you don't miss weight as you progress. Uh, and we'll talk about that during our, you know, prelim and main card. There were some guys who missed weight, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But here's our tail of the tape. We'll get a look at it in just a second. 
uh, as Enrique Larabas makes that walk in. And there's our tale of the tape brought to you by MikeTheTruth.com. Make sure you visit him for all your pictures afterwards. As we mentioned, debut for Enrique Larabas, the four inch height advantage and came in at 152.4. The reach advantage as well, six inch reach advantage for Enrique versus Emmanuel Garcia. Let's go to Wayne for official introduction. Your opening preliminary contest is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Lightweight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet six inches tall and he weighed in at 155.8 pounds. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas, he holds an amateur record of one win. No losses. This is Emmanuel Hellhound. Garcia! Yeah. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall, and he weighed in at 153 pounds even. Fighting out of Cancun, Mexico today, he makes his amateur debut. This is Enrique El Cachorro Larapa! Your referee in charge of the action, Jake Montalvo. All right, the energy picking up over here. The Hellhound against El Cachorro. Man, that, those are, no, that's a great way to start with some good nicknames. And here we go. Red gloves for Enrique Larbas and blue for Emmanuel Garcia. That manual kind of sitting on those punches a little bit, hasn't been real active so far, has already taken a couple of shots. Ooh, nice left there from Emmanuel. Yeah, it looks like he was just waiting for a flurry there. Pressing Enrique up against the cage. Enrique doing a good job of swimming that arm, that left arm in. This is one of the downsides of being the taller fighter in this situation. It's really difficult when a shorter fighter, especially if he's a little bit bigger, has you up against the cage like that. But Enrique Lara Boss having no problems getting that separation. And now we're starting to see, you know, that initial rush calming down and see how he responds because he came out swinging, did Enrique. Yeah, both guys conventional stance fighters. Garcia just walking Enrique down. Ooh, Ooh nice. big shot there. Enrique definitely got Emmanuel stunned there for a second. Ooh, big body shot. And Enrique is just landing at will. Emmanuel Garcia taking a lot of punishment so far. But we gotta be careful. We saw earlier in that in that round. Saw earlier in the round, Emmanuel will just come out of nowhere and start throwing a flurry of punches. Good uppercut there from Emmanuel. So important also when you have a debut and also a guy with a 1-0 amateur record, listen to their corners, right? Understanding those instructions in the heat of combat. Yeah, not exactly what sure happened right there to Enrique, but he just fell down. Yeah. Looked like he tripped over something in the cage. I don't see anything. I think he, he just, reached yeah. up and grabbed him. No, I think it was just he just tripped on that uh, on the pads there Feeling out the cage first time, right? There we go And nice flurry here from yeah, here Emmanuel. Comes, yeah, here comes Emmanuel with a flurry here Whoa, nice connection there and now Emmanuel also sporting that blood underneath his left eye Yeah, I think Emmanuel's Emmanuel's the game plan was to go in there and let him punch himself out. Manny with a nasty cut underneath that left eye so far. But you see Enrique, kind of his hands are dropping a little bit. He just took a big, deep breath. He's biting down hard on that mouthpiece. Ten Wait, seconds left. Yeah, waiting to hear that clap. <laughs> All of our prelim fights are under the amateur rule. So three rounds, three minutes each. 
Now, that was a very good round for Enrique Lara Boss, but the flurries from Emmanuel Garcia, I'm not sure if you're looking at damage, if those judges are looking at damage, then Enrique definitely won that first round. Look at a couple of those highlights. You see Emmanuel coming in and just throwing these flurries. He would take a few shots and look like they weren't phasing him at all. The blood doesn't bother him, nothing bothers him. He just decides to go on those 10, 12 punch flurries and did some damage there. That, if that round would have lasted a little longer, I don't know if Enrique would have lasted. Yeah, I wonder how do you score that one because it started really hot for Enrique, as you mentioned. Emmanuel then came back and had some good uh, flurries as well. That's a that's a good first round. Yeah, I, I think it went to Enrique, but I I don't know. I mean, that's a that is a tough one. As you mentioned, that blood now cleaned up underneath the left eye of Emmanuel Garcia, but. And he's gonna have a nice uh, take home present. Yeah, Manuel looking like the fresher fighter at this point. Very calm, you see him just kind of walk out. Very steady pace right toward his opponent. Round two, three minutes again, prelim. Right here on our Facebook page and YouTube page. Thank you so much for joining us for Fury FC 61. I think Emmanuel needs to keep pressuring Enrique. This is exactly what he's doing right here. He's trying to finish this fight right now. Throwing some big punches. Both guys landing. This is turning into a street brawl. Nice knee. Oh, let's see what happened here. I don't think you're allowed to do assisted knees. But I didn't feel like that was an assisted knee. I feel yeah, like it was part of the flurry. I don't think it looked like it was any kind of clinched up situation. But nonetheless, a stoppage here, just a warning. Yeah, I, th I, I don't quite, it didn't look like an assisted knee to me, but it, it could have been. I, I didn't notice, maybe it happened too fast. Jake Montalvo is a lot closer to the action than we are. Well, not a lot closer, by about eight feet. <laughs> Yeah, and the amateur rule set, no uh, no assisted knees. Ooh, nice. Left. These guys are going right back to where they were. Man, this is one <laughs> banger of a fight to get us going. <laughs> this is Look at this first card. Look at this first fight. This is unbelievable. And that was only the first minute of the round. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is crazy. You see Enrique maybe resting a little bit there. Both guys catching their breath a little bit. Nice body shots from Lara Boss. Yeah, Manuel Garcia pushing Enrique Lara Boss up against the cage. Doing a good job of using his head, but I think all he's doing, and he very, very close again to an assisted knee there. Now peace reset. Yeah, and what the assisted knee means at home is there's basically no tie clinches. You can't pull down on the head and push it toward the knee. The knees have to be clean and clear without assistance from the hands. And you see how labored those kicks are from Enrique Lara Boss. And Emmanuel Garcia is just stalking Enrique now. Very hard punches. Taking a lot of punishment, though. Got to think that he, there's no way he can last. And you see Emmanuel talking to Enrique now. Nice Walking him down, yeah, good body shot there. 40 seconds left, round two. Yeah, Enrique is effective with his striking, but he does need to get his hands up. Whenever uh, Emmanuel gets in the pocket, he needs to get those hands up a little bit. He's taking some shots in there, and if he takes too many of those or takes it on the wrong spot, not much you can do about it. Enrique not using his jab probably the way he wants to with that using that six inch height and reach advantage Allowing Emmanuel to get in the pocket This might be a breaking point here for Enrique Larabas Emmanuel Garcia still pushing forward 10 seconds left in round two He's been so many shots being thrown off his back foot by <laughs> yeah. Enrique This is so crazy Man This is the way to get this is the way to get it going. Yeah, look at Emmanuel Garcia. He's still talking to Enrique, telling him he's fresh, telling him you're not hurting me <laughs> at all. A lot of talking going on in there in the cage. Emmanuel Garcia choosing not to use his stool. 
Enrique Lara Boss looks tired. And even though <laughs> uh, Emmanuel has taken more damage, man, he is still the fresher fighter. He is walking right through that damage and just waiting to deliver damage of his own. Not, sh not showing as much on the face, but these flurries from Emmanuel Garcia are just crazy. See that marquee flurry from round two in our highlights? Just punch after punch. I mean, he just unloaded there. Yeah, and you see Emmanuel Garcia just... Actually knocked his snap and ripping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice cage stomp, marking his territory as Emmanuel Garcia. Yeah, and that's got to be a little bit disheartening for Enrique, knowing that he's done all that damage and it's really done no damage to him. Ooh, good connect there from Enrique. Yeah, I think Emmanuel is, is trying to frustrate Enrique. He's coming in in the pocket. Okay, looks like he may have some boxing in his background. He's continuing to stalk. Uh, Emmanuel Garcia is continuing to stalk Enrique Lara Boss. Walking him down, not, never getting out of the pocket. He's almost always punching distance. So funny, Emmanuel Garcia said that he looks up to Peter Caballero, who's going to be on our main event. Also, Eddie Torres, another local fighter here, we'll, we'll see on our main card on UFC Fight Pass. And he's just showcasing that heart of the valley right here. Man, these guys are going hard. <laughs> he's talking, he's still talking. I love this. Yeah, Manu Garcia is, I'd love to hear the commentary that's going on in the ring. We can't quite hear it, but Emmanuel Garcia has, a, has an evil look on his face as he's walking down Enrique Lara Boss. Maybe they're talking about Mother's Day reservations. Yeah, afterwards. maybe so. Maybe they're gonna <laughs> making dinner plans. You see, Enrique is extremely tired in his debut, not able to be efficient with his punches. You can see it's costing him just a little bit here in the third round. He's starting to take a little bit of punishment. Ooh, nice left hand there by Enrique. Emmanuel continuing to pass out punishment there with flurries. One, under 120 left, 115. These guys are like their feet are tied together. <laughs> Emmanuel wants this. <laughs> Man, what a fight. Ricky Lara Boss's mouthpiece is about to come out. His, his mouth is open. And Emmanuel Garcia is just walking him down. He's got 45, 50 seconds. This is going to be the longest 45 seconds of their lives. Enrique's got to be careful. He's kind of walking back with his chin up. He's got to be careful. He's a established that jab now at this time. Got to keep him away. See if Emmanuel Garcia can finish this fight here. Under 30 seconds left. I mean, he is winning the round, he is walking him down, but can he get the big finish here in his second amateur fight? Man, Jake Montalvo now talking to Emmanuel Garcia, saying, man, you got to fight. And Emmanuel Garcia is delivering. Ooh, another big shot from Enrique. It's 10 seconds, Enrique is just trying to beat him with head movement now and just not trying to take any more punishment. Oh, and a little party gift after what, the bell. Yeah, <laughs> what a fight. Holy cow. Man, what a way to start off this amateur card. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Emmanuel Garcia might have just jumped into our favorite fighters list already. Man, that was a blast. Yeah, and don't, you can't let, you know, look at the difference in the, these guys. Emmanuel Garcia carries a little bit of extra weight on him. He's six inches shorter than his opponent who has just ripped to shreds. And these guys. Manu Garcia walking Enrique Lara Boss down this whole match. I don't know how to call this one. Of course, the damage is worse to Emmanuel Garcia, but Enrique Lara Boss took some shots also. He just doesn't wear it the same. What a great fight. Here they are. You can see it on both fighters' faces, especially Enrique Lara Boss. He's exhausted at this point, but still throwing the hard, hard punches. And Emmanuel Garcia, I don't think he... I would like to see the punch stat numbers on this. Man, crazy. Yeah, we got to see the numbers on on the uh, on the punches there. And you see both fighters 
in there, finally getting their their props in, relaxing just a little bit. Because that was a great way to start our prelim card for Fury FC 61. And we've got six more fun, exciting fights coming up for you right here on our prelim card. Make sure you tell all your friends and make sure they share that link, whether it'll be on Facebook or YouTube. Fun way to get us going. And don't forget, we will be going on UFC Fight Pass live at 4.30 p.m. for Caballero Guardiola, our bantamweight main event, live from Burt Ogden Arena in Edinburgh, Texas. The first Fury FC card here, and what a fun way to get us going. Man. Gonna get our official decision here in just a few seconds. Cleaning up some stuff inside, getting things taken care of, and then we'll get the official decision here with Wayne Leggett walking back into the cage here. A lot of local fighters going at it. Of course, we're gonna keep a lot of that Valley talent right here. As we've mentioned, a lot of the local schools as well. And thank you everyone if you are supporting your fighters and watching us, we appreciate it. Make sure you tag us on Instagram at FuryFC. And we will reshare your posts and your watch parties as well. Let's go inside to Wayne Leggett for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. With scores of 30, 27, 29, 28, and 30, 27, your winner by unanimous decision, Hellhound Emmanuel Garcia! Wow. That was, yeah, that was a, that was a close fight. Could have gone either way. I thought, I thought Enrique uh, caused more damage uh, to Emmanuel Garcia, but I guess the fact that he was stalking him down and uh, pushing the action the whole time, I guess in the judge's eyes, that, that got him the, the victory. So we're gonna keep it here and uh, talk a little bit, or we're gonna take a quick break. What's happening is all the fighters have to meet in the back for the licensing meeting, and they're gonna regroup. Uh, that's so what, what, what's, yeah, what's, what's happening? happening? What's happening is is that there are some bottles with alcohol in them and some uh, and some cans, and everything in the Bird Dog Arena has to be poured. So gotcha. uh, they're okay. gonna take a little break and they're gonna get all the bottles and cans out of here and make them swap them out with uh, Dixie cups, and then we'll be back. Stay with us. We'll be back after this break.
please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, David De Los Santos. All right. All right, so we're here. Everyone, we're going to continue this awesome prelim card for you with David Do De Los Santos fighting out of Corpus. And, man, if the first fight was any indication into what kind of card it's going to be here on our prelims, then we are in for a fun evening of fights. Man, Raheel, I don't know if you remember, but the last card we did <laughs> yeah. was... One of the most incredible cards I've ever seen, and it didn't start off with a bang that this one did. This one's unbelievable so far. That first fight was amazing. A little bit controversial uh, decision, but I don't dis I don't necessarily disagree with it. It was a it was a great fight and a good learning experience for Enrique Lara Boss. But right now, David De Los, De Los Santos looking for his first victory. He lost his Andy debut back in February via TKO but gets a chance to get his first amateur win here at Fury FC 61 in front of the local crowd. Corpus, Mission, Edinburgh, of course, McAllen. Yeah, Padre the whole Allen. Valley, Padre yeah. Allen. All the big uh, stomping grounds for you when you were in college as well, I'm sure. Yeah, when I, uh, <laughs> when I used to come back to Texas, I would come back down and head south for sure especially around spring break time so absolutely sure this place is pretty live still at spring break so many local fighters on our prelim card and so many exciting fighters this is one of them can't wait to watch david man heard a lot of good things about him pushes the pace comes out of some decorated camps weapons at hand here locally so we're getting a good chance to see him let's go Meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Xavier Young. Here we go, Xavier Young fighting out of Fitness Fight Factory out of Fort Worth, Texas. The executioner training over there with Johnny Bedford. Johnny Bedford and Roger Navias, probably the two busiest coaches in the building today. Yep. Both guys having a ton of guys on the card. Fitness Fight Factory traveling well. Got uh, Darren Whitney, Xavier Young, Evan Cutts, all those guys from Fitness Fight Factory today. It's so funny. We watched him in Dallas, right, at Fury FC 58, where he lost to Gabriel Calvario. And it was a pretty good fight. I went back and watched it on Thursday. And it was just that one body shot that just got him, right? Like, sometimes you just get, get, you just get caught. Yeah, if there's ever a shot to your liver, uh, you're not going to survive that. Uh, in the next 30 seconds. It's, uh, it's a devastating way to go down. Our tale of the tape, the 39-year-old David De Los Santos has that, uh, has that age on his side. Xavier Young, a hot up-and-coming amateur fighter here. 5'9", one inch height advantage for him. Both guys at that featherweight weight and the reach advantage going to Xavier Young. Young, let's go inside to Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Aces Performance Exhaust is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Featherweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist is 5 feet 8 inches tall and he weighed in officially at 144.2 pounds. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Today he seeks his first win as an amateur. This is David De Los Santos! In introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet, nine inches tall, and he weighed in at 145.8 pounds. Fighting out of Denton County, Texas, he holds one amateur victory. This is Xavier, the executioner, Young! Your referee in charge of the action, Frank Colazzo. I don't know which way this advantage goes, whether the 39-year-old has the advantage or the 22-year-old. This is MMA. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For, fourth fight for <laughs> Xavier Young. Second fight for David. Life experience advantage, 39-year-old. Yeah, David. for sure. He has yeah. that. And this is going to be... Oh, hold on. We're going to have that... 
Do we have a knee check here? Yeah, it looks like he, he tried an assisted knee there. Those are those are things that are really difficult to not do yeah. because your opponent is coming into you. It's really hard to keep your hands back. You can put your palms on them on their on the front of them, but you can't put it behind their back, behind their shoulders, or behind their head. You can't assist those knees. And so didn't look like uh, David De Los Santos was affected by it, um, but this is a rule that you know does come into play a lot with these amateurs. You know, most of these guys spar with pros, and not that they're throwing assisted tie clinch knees in the in sparring, but they are allowed in the pro ranks. So it makes it very very difficult to to keep from doing those when you're when that's what your opponent's giving you. Not only that, but you're also drilling those. You're drilling that clinch. You're you're working that technique in just normal, you know, trading. So yeah, it is hard to deprogram that. But nonetheless, these are the rules, as you mentioned. As every young, young landing well here, David Del Sandals might, might have taken a poke to the eye there. Adjusting his left eye. Those blue gloves on David. By the way, Xavier in the red. Oh, Ooh. big Superman and shot there from Xavier. Fake the knee with the Superman punch. That was a nice connect there by Xavier Young. And his hands are looking really crisp today. Yeah, he's looking good. He was looking good in his last fight whenever he, you know, ended up taking that body shot. He was looking good. But, man, like we said earlier, you take a liver shot. Ooh, ooh, that's a big shot. That is it. It looks like that's going to be it. It looks like he did an assisted that's knee that's it. again. Oh. To his opponent, I don't think this fight's going to be over. I think they may disqualify Xavier Young. That was a really, that was really close, though. Again, man, I just haven't seen what I see a, as a like a flagrant assisted knee. I, I'd like to see the replay on that, but yeah, the, we thought this fight was over. It looked like it would have been over without the knee. But let's see if he reaches those hands behind. Oh, he's, he may have been Ooh, a downed it, opponent. Yeah. Yeah, that, he was going for the hands. He faded back, but you're right. Yeah, it may have it been a like down opponent. Getting a medical check right now on David De Los Santos. If David, David De Los Santos says he's not able to, to continue, I think this is going to be a, either a no contest or a disqualification. He looks kind of wobbly right now, but we'll see. We'll get the, one more look at that knee. And you're right, like there was almost in, you know, look, again, your instincts... Do kick in there? No, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I don't. I thought that down opponent was three points of contact on the floor. Look at that reverse angle again. That first angle that we saw, we could see the limbs. Let's see if three were down, but yeah, that's this fight's over. It is over. Yeah. Says he's not able to continue. The doctor says he's not able to continue. David is ready to continue with the doctor. Well, in. And look, it's an amateur fight. You've got to protect the fighters. you got to be careful whenever you're... Ooh, yeah, oh, that's right that in the brutal. temple. That was brutal. But you got to be careful what you say to the doctor. If you want it, you can't stumble around. You can't... And if, you, if, it's, if you're stumbling around, you're stumbling around. If you're dazed, you're dazed. Yeah. But if you're not wanting to fight anymore or you're wanting to, you know, I'm not saying that's what he was doing, but I'm just saying if you want to continue to fight, it's got to be good posture it's got to be yes sir i'm ready to go you have to be able to see clearly and the doctors are not going to do anything that's not in the interest and safety of the fighters so i wonder is there going to be a dq or a no contest we'll see we'll get the official decision in just a second have you seen any indication on what it will be no i haven't yeah, it looks like david Los santos is not even going to stay in for this it looks like it's going to be a no contest he was and, not happy at all. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy, no. but it was, I mean, it was an accident, I think. I don't think he, I think it was just reflex. Uh, you know, that's, again, that's what these amateurs are for. You've got to get that experience in these fights, and Xavier's got to figure out a way to control those urges to, you know, when he sees something open, this is not a street fight. You're right, it, go, it goes back to, look, at F3, they're training with a lot of pros. You're, you're drilling a lot of different things. There's spar sessions, all that. Sometimes the instincts kick in, not making an excuse for him. Yeah. But to understand what happened, because 
Look, for David, he wanted this fight because he wants more experience, and we cut it short, so it's not fun. Let's go inside to Wayne to see exactly how they rule this. So they're, they're, we're going to get the official word here in just a second exactly how this is going to end. So both guys talking to each other inside. David Dolan Santos and Xavier Young trying to get a little bit more cage time, but unfortunately that was cut short. And here we go to Wade for the official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, 35 seconds into the very first round, declaring your winner by disqualification due to an illegal knee to a grounded opponent, David De Los Santos. And David De Los Santos takes it by disqualification, a knee to a grounded opponent. You know, it was, uh, he's, he's not happy about it. He, I think he's more unhappy about the knee to the head than he is that he actually won by the knee, the illegal knee to the head. And so I think he's, uh, I think he's a little bit upset about that, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Please welcome to the blue corner, Eric Delgadillo. All right, so a third fight of our prelim card, Eric Delgadillo. Second fight in his amateur career, fighting out of Laredo kickboxing. He lost his Amy debut at uh, FC 56 against Adam Gates, a guy that we're familiar with. The name sounds familiar yep. for our Fury FC fans out there. And he gets a chance to get back into the cage and work uh, and show what he's been working on. Yeah, you know, I love coming down here to, to this part of Texas to see these fighters, especially the local fighters. They have that, you know, just fighting spirit down here. You know, there's a, there, there are starting to be a lot of MMA gyms down here, but there are a ton of boxing gyms here, you know, here and just over the border. I mean, you'll see boxing schools all over the place. They love boxing, they love kickboxing, they just love to fight down here in the valley. That's what we love too, is that action. We, yeah. We about that action, boy. Yeah, that's right. We definitely are. And Not to say, look, we love the BJJ game as well. We yeah. like the ground game and the wrestling, but Love a good stand-up brawl. Yeah, we want to see their front legs tied together and they got to stay in the pocket and then let's just throw some bombs. You know, that's what the crowd wants to see. It doesn't make for a, you know, you can't make a career out of doing that. Uh, but, you know, it's, it makes for an exciting fight. And there's a lot of guys that love to fight like that. I mean, we haven't seen a wrestling, we haven't seen a takedown yet tonight. And so uh, we've seen a couple of down knees, but we haven't seen any actual takedowns. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Anthony Torres. Anthony Torres looking for his first win in his amateur career. 0-2 so far. Yeah, this kid's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, under Marco Bali at Starscream Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. Has a little bit of a wrestling background and, and boxes out of Redemption Boxing Gym. Shout out to his coach, Estilo Solis from Brownsville, Texas. This dude's got the look of a fighter, man. Now, not in stature, but if you look at that mug, he's got the he's got the face of a fighter. At only 5'2", you know, this guy carries a big stick. And this is another showdown. We'll see our tail of the tape in just a second. But I want to mention this about Anthony Torres, 34-year-old, taking on a 22-year-old. We had a 39-year-old taking on a 22-year-old. So I like it. I like, I like, I like the, uh, I like that life doesn't stop at 30, okay, everyone? That's right. 34-year-old, 5'2", and weighted at 134 pounds. Then Anthony Torres, the five-inch height advantage for Eric Delgadillo and his reach advantage. Uh, I got here five-inch reach advantage as well for Eric Delgadillo. But we'll see that Muay Thai background for Anthony Torres, as you mentioned, a blue belt. So we'll see what he has to showcase. Let's go inside to Wade to get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight, brought to you by Private Label, is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Phantom Weight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, seven inches tall, and he weighed in at a perfect 135 pounds. Fighting out of Laredo, Texas, 
Today he seeks his first win as an amateur. This is Eric Delgadillo. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet two inches tall, and he weighed in at 134 pounds even. Fighting out of San Juan, Texas, today, E2 seeks his first win as an amateur. This is Anthony Torres. Your referee in charge of the action, Jake Montalvo. Man, Rahul, I love it when both guys have had a couple of fights and looking for their first victory. They're hungry. Yeah, very hungry. They don't want to go down another another loss. Anthony Torres with the rear knee brace on his well, knee sleeve. That was the first takedown attempt we've seen. Good wrestling there from Eric Dugadio. Yeah, good wrestling defense. Anthony Torres all over him, though. Trying to lace that leg. Throwing some heavy shots there, some dirty boxing. Tried that hip toss, not able to get enough leverage. Anthony Torres, third amateur fight. In the red gloves is Torres, blue for Doug Neal. Yeah, Anthony Torres needs to be careful. The last place he needs to be is up against the cage. There from Eric. Yeah, Anthony Torres just having a hard time reaching Eric Delgadillo. You can see he's stuffing those shots every time he comes in. Like Anthony Torres is already a little bit tired, already got his mouth open. Ooh, good body shots there from Eric. Nice, nice counter there from. Be careful with those assisted knees again. He grabbed that tie clinch and quickly let it go. I don't want to see another disqualification. Oh, nice little hip toss there from Anthony Torres. Anthony's got his mouth. There's about one minute left in this round. Anthony's got his mouth wide open. His mouthpiece tucked out just a little bit. Looks like he's already sucking wind just a little bit. Wow, Erica Delgadillo looks like he's in pretty good shape. Oh, very nice. See if he's going to keep holding on to that. Yeah, he needs he to shot. not because yeah. he's taking he's some taking shots. Some big shots from the backside there. Yeah, one of the downfalls of being the shorter fighter is that you just can't reach from places that the other guys can. Twenty seconds, twenty-five seconds left. First round. Delgadillo against Torres. And Delgadillo on the attack now. About ten seconds left. If Anthony Torres doesn't start defending himself, Jake Montalvo may step in here. Luckily, he got some distance between them. That's the other thing. The stoppages come a little bit faster in the amateur ranks. So that is something to watch out for for Anthony Torres. Yeah. You don't want to be in a situation where Jake might have to jump in and say, that's enough. That's a great point by you. We're going to look at look at the corners right now. Yeah, these uh, these they don't let these amateurs go as long. They don't allow them to take as much punishment. You know, this is this is early in these guys' career. This is something that they're you know trying still trying to figure things out. Uh, maybe they're not 100 percent sure. Probably both of these guys are, but they're not 100 percent sure sometimes when to when to stop or when to you know when to tap. So they're not going to let them go as far as they as they typically will with the pros. Yep. And if you're watching, make sure you tag us on social media at Fury Fighting on Instagram at Fury FC on Facebook. Make sure you're sharing the links as well to our prelim broadcast. And again, tag us and we will share you in our Instagram stories. And here we go, round two. Torres, Delgadillo. 
Blue gloves for Delgadillo, red for Torres. Delgadillo is still looking very fresh. I think Torres is still having a hard time reaching. Not only is he a shorter fighter, but his arms are extremely short also. Nice takedown there. He went a little flat whenever he took him down instead of getting right up to his knees, giving Anthony or uh, giving Eric just a second to get back up over the top. And once you get your head above your opponents when you're on the ground, it's typically you're on your way up to your feet. This is a familiar position we saw as round one ended. Torres was in that defense position against the cage. His corner urging him, urging him to get out of there, move around a little bit, showcase his hands. Anthony Torres may get pushed out the door if they... Yeah. <laughs> They're leaning heavy on that cage door. I think we are, our engineering budget was good this, That's right. for this car. <laughs> you see Anthony Torres taking big, big, deep breaths there, and Eric Delgadillo still looks very, very fresh. Do you want to see Eric open it up a little bit, showcase those hands, representing Laredo kickboxing? Yeah, he's tried a couple of kicks, too. Speaking of kickboxing, he's tried a couple of kicks, and every time he does, Anthony Torres shoots in and was able to get that big takedown just a few seconds ago. That's a big shot right there. He just landed two big shots. Anthony Torres on the cage now. Like we said, they're not going to let this go forever. If he's not defending himself, Eric Delgadillo's got to be careful, too, with those assisted knees. They've been calling those a lot tonight. They're not allowing those to happen. Yeah, see, that's where, look, it, he's not bringing them in, but it, it's that, it could be that interpretation of the rule by Jake. Uh, we'll see, but he's letting it go, and that's going to be enough. That is it. That is it. Eric Delgadillo gets his first win as an amateur and his first win in Fury FC. Good work there from the young man. Yeah, man, just too much for Anthony Torres. You know, the, the height difference, the reach difference, uh, you know, was just too much. And I think Torres had some beautiful takedown attempts, had some good takedowns, but Eric Delgadillo just proved to be too much uh, for Anthony Torres. Good rebound win for Eric after his last fight, which was a loss where he was taken down a lot. We got a chance to see a little bit more here from Eric. And a good one has has the makings of a nice young fighter here in Fury FC. Congratulations to him on his first win. Congratulations to his entire camp. We love to see that big moment here at Fury FC. We get a look at that finish here on our replay. Yeah, big takedown here. He's able to trap that leg. Big takedown. Eric Delgadillo was able to get right back up. And then you see these two big shots gets Anthony Torres up against the cage. And then that was all she wrote. Eric Delgadillo is just unloading from there, and Jake Montalvo had seen enough. One more Hail Mary there from Anthony Torres, but once he landed this knee, you'll see it he lands this knee. It goes right to the gut, and then he lands one right to the chin. And that's when Jake Montalvo said he had seen enough. That, that one right there. Let it go for a while, but let's go yeah. inside of Wayne to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jake Montalvo calls for a stop to the action. Two minutes, three seconds until round number two, declaring your winner by TKO, Eric Delgadillo. Very entertaining fight. Eric Delgadillo gets his first win as an amateur mixed martial artist. Jake Montavo stopping it in there in the middle of the second. And here we go. We were talking about age a while ago, Raheel. These next two guys might be the youngest two we've ever called. Absolutely. We had a chance to meet one of them before we'll tell you that story. First of all, let's we'll get it going inside in just a second. We got our final pictures here in for the winning camp. Let's go inside to Wayne. Please welcome to the blue corner, Abner Castro. So this is, you're right, the youngest combined age for two fighters that I think this is our seventh card together, Michael. 
and this is the youngest by far. 18-year-old Abner Castro, who's walking out right now. He's got his backpack on, got his headphones on like he's going to school. Yeah, he probably is coming straight from yeah. school. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's a, and it's a baby shark backpack, it looks like. But what do I know? <laughs> Both these guys combined are still 10 years younger than me. <laughs> he actually might, he has his pre-cal homework in there. But this is a really cool moment because, as we mentioned, he's 18. His opponent, who we're going to meet in a second, is 17 years old. But the reason we're bringing up that age is this is what we want to see from amateurs, right? Guys getting that experience in now. So when they eventually are done with that amateur career, they're starting to peak that experience. They're in their 20s. And we've seen it from other fighters yeah. in the Houston area as well, Dallas area. And this is the next evolution of this region. It's getting more of these younger guys in here, and they start peaking. And yeah. man, this is awesome. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching guys like Levi Miles when they were, you know, very, very young kids that, you know, competing at super high levels in jiu-jitsu and then getting into MMA very, very young, just like these guys. And look how they turned out. Levi Miles a beast. Imagine how, imagine how much uh, experience these guys will have by the time they're 25, and they'll still yeah. have a whole career ahead of them. It's pretty let's, awesome. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the right corner, Jesse Pantoja. Okay, a little Tupac for Jesse Pantoja, I like it. So this 17 year old now, making his way to the cage, making his second walk to the cage. That's oh, amazing. What? It's amazing this is his second fight at 17 years old. Wait, he was walking around early, like you mentioned, we met him and his mom. And man, this kid looks way younger than 17. He's got braces still. Good kid though, very sweet kid. Was very, very nice. Kept calling us sir. A little weird, but you know, he's a he's a he's in a he's a, a young man in a, in a grown man sport for sure. He just wants to fight. We asked him, we're like, hey, you wanna shout out anybody? You wanna talk about you know, we usually do some free yeah. you know, some free fight interviews. And he's like, nah, I just wanna fight. And it, like, I just want to fight. Yeah. I, I'm just here to get my, my fight on, which I love. Uh, second fight for him, as I mentioned. He lost his debut to Peter Gallegos, uh, Gallegos in February. Our tail of the tape, as you see the debut for Abner Castro. Three-inch height advantage. Weighed in at 118 for this 120 catch weight fight. And Jesse Pantoja at 115.6 pounds. The reach advantage going to Abner Castro, three inches. And this is going to be a fun. Yeah, and these guys, not only is their age only 35 years old, but their combined weight is still less than Richard Burmaster's weight. <laughs> This could be the start of the Fury <laughs> FC U19. That's right. Look, every other sport does it, right? Yeah. Let's go inside to Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 120 pounds. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist is five feet, eight inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 118 pounds even. Fighting out of Mission, Texas, today he makes his amateur debut. This is Abner Castro. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet, five inches tall, and he weighed in at 115 pounds even. Also fighting out of Mission, Texas. Today, he seeks his first win as an amateur. This is Jesse Pantoa. Your referee in charge of the action, Frank Colazzo. So Mission, Texas representing, as we mentioned, there's gonna be a lot of those local school oh, yeah. rivalries here. Jesse Pantoa. Abner Castro in the blue gloves, by the way. Yeah, Abner Castro coming out hard right now. Really putting the pressure on Jesse. 
both guys <laughs> ready to bang. Yeah, Jesse with a very unorthodox stance. Damn. Moves a lot. Nice, very nice trip. Right down into the mount, almost into the mount, maybe in that quarter mount. He's got that mounted, he had that mounted guillotine, but it's a man, very nice escape there from Abner Castro. What else do we expect? We're here. This thing's going 100 miles an hour right from the start. Man, what a fun start. Yeah, and both these guys. Ooh, oh, Edgar Castro's final. got a triangle. Nice defense there from Jesse Pantoja. That's, he, that's it. That's it. This crowd is going wild in our fourth pre-lift card. <laughs> Abner Castro with the tap. Yeah, both these guys brought the fans here today. Two young guys, 17 and 18 years old, showing a lot of high-level skill there. Beautiful fight. That was a, it was a, there was, it was very quick, but there was a lot of skill in that, in that little burst. You saw that trip from uh, Jesse Pantoja, and then you saw the, the escape, the mount escape from Abner Castro. Here they go. Once they get tied up, you'll see a lot of high-level, high-level competition here. Not bad for two amateurs. You see that outside leg trip right down in, goes right into the mount. Almost lets him mount here, and then it immediately starts to escape. You see he's got that right knee in there. They're able to push that out, and then able to get that triangle locked up. Looks like he may have had his arm straightened out also. So triangle arm bar finish there for, for Abner Castro. Beautiful match. Man, congratulations to him. First fight in his amateur career results in a win for Abner Castro. Representing Flow Martial Arts right here in Mission, Texas, which is just, I think, two miles away from us, which I love. You hear that crowd go wild. Let's make this thing official. Let's go inside the wave. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, three seconds into the very first round, declaring our winner by tap out due to a triangle, Abner Castro. Man, that was awesome. You got to give it up not only for Abner, but the respect that this crowd has for the sport. I love it, man. Good, exciting fight yeah. there. Let's go for our next fight. Let's meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, Enrique Tapia. Enrique Tapia making his amateur debut, fighting out of Flow Martial Arts in Mission, Texas. Five foot seven. You know, we don't get a lot of information about these guys in their debut, and typically there's something different about this, where he'll typically when we do pro-ams, it's the amateur guys. You know, we get on our little thread that we're in contact with all the fighters, and we say, hey, we need information on you, any shout-outs. There were none on this amateur card. Usually it's all amateurs. They're the quickest to do that. But down here in the valley, man, they're just here to fight. They don't care you. about talking. They don't care about any of that. They just want to fight. It is all about that. I mean, we've pointed it out a few times already on this broadcast, whether it be the guys weren't intermingling that much, even though they were all in the same, the same room, the blue corner. Yeah. Right? Like, those guys come out together. Then the red will come out together. There was no, there's no joking around. Usually we see it before. You know, guys are kind of mixing it up, talking to each other. Nope, they just want to fight, man. There's, there's this fight energy in here that I love, and we've seen it so far with some big, big wins and finishes. Let's go inside to Wayne to meet Enrique's opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Jack Martinez. Jack Martinez. Repping uh, Corpus Christi, by the way. So right here again, real close by. Interesting thing with Jack. So he hasn't fought since 2019. So this is his return to the cage. He won his last fight in 2019 against Drake Lopez, uh, who, by the way, had that nasty heel hook that I still haven't watched the replay of, yeah. even though you, you tagged me. You tagged me a few times. You yeah. tried tricking me. And I still haven't seen it. I know when you tag me in something, I'm like, I, this, this might be that heel hook from yeah. Fury FC 59. Where he'll make his wife look at it first before he looks at it. <laughs> Tell me if this is that nasty heel hook. <laughs> She's like, oh, who's DMing you on Instagram? And yeah. it's Michael, don't worry. That's right. He's just sending me, he's just sending me that heel hook <laughs> image. But a, a different, a different, various focus points. Yeah. <laughs> so Jack Martinez now 
with that layoff, gets back in there. Even though this is his fourth fight, it almost feels like a debut again, just trying to get back to that, that routine, trying to get back to that flow. Let's go inside to Wade for our introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Aces Performance Exhaust is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Flyway Division. Introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet seven inches tall and he weighed in at 126 pounds. Fighting out of far Texas, today he makes his amateur debut. This is Enrique Kike Tapia. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet seven inches tall, and he weighed in at 125.4 pounds. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, only one defeat. This is Jack Martinez. Your referee in charge of the action, Jake Montalvo. I like it. Two 22-year-olds going at it. So we don't feel that old now. I mean, I said, yes, yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was doing at 22. On, baby, Look at these dudes getting in here, putting it all on the line. I love it. Blue gloves for Tapia, red for Martinez. Yeah, Martinez was very crisp striking so far. Tapia catches that leg. Expect some good stand up here from both guys. Yeah, both guys wearing the exact same shorts, also. Yeah. Wonder how they got away with that. <laughs> Typically, you don't see that, but they plan that a little better. But maybe one did it despite the other one. You and I always have a, a nice exchange beforehand, make sure we don't match. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I'm usually the one in the white dress shirt. That's it. I love yeah. my white dress shirt. That's it. Yeah, I try to add a little color in there. You know, Jack Martinez trying a little more laid back approach. And Enrique Tapia is just going for broke in here. When he gets in the pocket, he starts throwing. He's got a little got a little stun there. Jack Martinez landed there. Maybe should have applied a little bit of pressure here. Jack just sitting. Ooh, big shot. Big shot. This might be over. Enrique Tapia took a big shot right there. Guillotine the locked in there. Jack got a deep, deep guillotine. There's no way he's getting out of that. Gotta be careful. Ooh, nice. Enrique Tapia did get out of that. Now he's on the bottom. Jack Martinez taking a little bit of. And now he's giving up his back. Big mistake there from Jack Martinez. Now he's taking a lot of punishment. Enrique Tapia got to be careful to make sure those punches clear that ear line. Jake Montalvo right there to see the action to make sure that everything's on the up and up. But Jack Martinez is in a lot of trouble here. A nice transition there. Yeah, his head's a little low there. He's not going to be able to choke him from that position. Enrique Tapia is going to want to improve his position from there. He's got to be very, very careful. Jack Martinez is leaving that left arm underneath the uh, underneath the head, behind the neck. There is a submission there. You can reach up and grab that elbow. Make it very, very uncomfortable on that arm. Ten seconds. He's go. got a face crank. Nothing there in the mount now. About five seconds left. Will that be enough? We go to round two. What yes. a fun round. Man, just whenever you thought that Jack Martinez was going to finish that fight, Enrique Tapia turns it right around and probably wins that round. We saw that a lot last card, FC 60, where we had guys who looked like they had won the fight, and all of a sudden, 
Their opponent comes back and gets a huge win and reverses it. For a guy making his debut, that was very impressive to not panic. Let's take a look at our highlights of round one. Yeah, because he was in some definite trouble there, Raheel. You see he took that big right hand. And right here, remember we told you earlier, they don't let these amateurs go very long when they're taking punishment like this. Good on Jake Montavo. Immediate switch there from Jack Martinez to that guillotine choke. Ends up getting out, and Enrique Tapia takes his back, and this is where they spent the next minute or so. But Enrique Tapia just passed out some punishment from here, doing a great job of trapping the arms. Nice round there. All right, if that was round one, I can't wait to see what round two has to offer us. I'm gonna quit trying to guess who's gonna win these fights. This is crazy. You know who wins? The fans. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> On the last car Hill, we had two of the biggest underdogs ever yep. uh, that were winners on the last card, and both of them were just shocking. But it was unbelievable. Good for those guys. Jack Martinez, red gloves. Blue for Tapia. The more experienced fighter, Jack Martinez. Fourth amateur fight, but has a fought since 2019 again. So almost feels like a debut for both guys. Tapia making his actual debut. Yeah, you can tell, though, that, that Jack Martinez has been training this whole time. He hasn't just been laying off uh, and then took a fight and went into camp. You can tell he's been training. His, his boxing's very crisp. Uh, he, has taken a, he has taken a few shots, uh, and maybe his ground game and his wrestling is not as, as crisp, but his stand-up looks pretty good. He's got a pretty good guy in front of him, too, making his debut in Enrique Tapia. Really impressed by both fighters. They do have that mirror image almost, not only with the matching shorts, but also 5'7 in height. The three inch reach, uh, excuse me, the uh, reach advantage goes a little bit to Martinez. And yeah, Martinez, I can't tell if that was a trip or if he actually took a shot there that made him go down. But Enrique Tapia on top again. Jack Martinez got to be careful here. Jack tries that technical stand-up, but you can't do that whenever your opponent has one of your feet. You cannot do that technical stand-up. They'll let you think you're going to get about halfway through it, and they'll trip you back again. And all it does is give them a better position from on the top. So he's going to try to skate over that knee right there. Good job of Enrique Tapia not going into the guard of Jack Martinez. Hampshire kick there. Jack just kind of gave up that pass, it looked like. Gave up his back again. This one might be deep, Michael. Yeah, he's he's got it here. This is a very deep. His hand, the choke hand's not in great position. It's more of a neck crank, but that is very, very uncomfortable. He's got that body lock now. Now he's got it underneath the chin. Jack Martinez needs to reach up and grab the other hand. He does not need to keep trying to grab the choke arm. He needs to grab the other arm and pull that down in front of him and go two on one. It's very difficult to choke someone with one arm. Jack Martinez in a lot of trouble here. Eric Enrique Tapia trying to trap that arm. 10 seconds left, he can hear it. Martinez, can he survive this final punch? Yeah, he does. He gets out of the round for round three at least. But man, that was a really good round for Tapia. Man, I think Tapia may be up two rounds to none now after such a fiery start for for uh, Jack Martinez. And, the, you know, the more experienced guy, I mean, that was a really, really good round for Enrique Tapia. You see he's choosing not to get on the stool. Maybe a little message over to Jack Martinez showing him he's not tired. Takes the back again. Almost finishes here. Again, doling out punishment from the back. Jack Martinez doing a good job. Jack Martinez doing a good job of staying in there. And Martinez looked like he was done there. That that crank slash get team was almost, you know, it looked like it was in danger, but survived it. Could not have come at a perfect time to end the round for him. Yeah, but definitely lost that round. You got to think that Jack Martinez, hopefully his corner told him he's down two rounds to none, and he comes out swinging for the fences here. He need, I think he needs a finish to, to win this. Final round, three minutes, by the way. 
as you mentioned, he does come out swinging. Nice right there. Ooh, nice. Nice right overhand right there. Takes a left hand on the chin. Enrique Tapia's game this whole time. Everything Jack Martinez deals out. He gives right back. You see Martinez open up those hands a little bit as he did to start the round. Now, Jack Martinez is going backwards a little bit. You know, he's in the center of the cage, but not pushing the action. He really needs a finish here. This goes to the ground again. He can't afford for it to go to the ground and give up his back again. Knowing that with those three minute rounds, it's hard to even escape, get anything going. By the time you escape, you're, you're up against there already. You're right, keeping standing up is really important here for Martinez. Nice kick there. Martinez wearing those red gloves. And Enrique Tapia is still walking down Jack Martinez. Doing a great job of controlling the, controlling the distance. Yeah, Jack Martinez needs to turn it up. He's got a little over a minute here to do something. And that three-minute round, that's a double-edged sword for Hill because, you know, it's three minutes, so, you know, it's not as long as a pro bout, but also it does not give you a lot of time to, to work on some things. You know, you, after two minutes, you get somebody on the ground, you've only got 45 seconds or so uh, to get a finish. It's really difficult to get back up if someone, you know, it's easier for your opponent to kind of hold you if they know they're, if they know they're winning. That's definitely not happening here, though. These guys going at it. 50 seconds left, final round. Both corners just urging their fighters on to open it up, be the more aggressive one. You can see Martinez is swinging for the fences, just not connecting. Yeah, he's punching from a little bit outside the pocket. He's a little bit far away for, for anything to land. He's, he's a little bit further than his reach will, will connect. So he's try, kind of trying to reach for it and hoping that Tapia walks into it. And so far, Tapia did a little bit there, walked into it, but got about 10 seconds left. Let's see if they just go for broke here inside the, in the center of the cage. Three seconds left, and we will go to the score card. Man, good fight. Good fight. Yeah, very good. You know, evenly matched fight, even though one guy had three previous fights and one was making his debut. They were very well balanced, and, uh, very well matched. Take a look at our highlights for round three. Yeah, you see Jack Martinez was punching just a little bit almost the entire entire round from outside the pocket. He wasn't able to connect from anywhere. Enrique Tapia doing a good job at uh, moving his head, though, and kind of slipping out of the pocket. But again, you know, as an amateur, these are the things you learn. These are the mistakes that you make that you learn from. Uh, you know, and, and remember, Jack Martinez has been out of the cage for a little while. So although he's two and one, been out of the cage for three years, and this is the first time back in a while, maybe a little ring rust. A little ring rust if you believe in that sort of thing. Yeah. Some people think that's not a real thing because, you know, you're training the whole time, you're in there, you're getting punched, you're throwing punches. So ring rust is one of those things that, you know, some people think it's a myth and some people think it's a real thing. I don't think it's so much fighting in the cage. I think it's more of the atmosphere. And they've definitely got a great atmosphere to fight in here tonight. Again, that routine as well. Just trying to remember that. Yeah. He's peaking at the right time. Let's go inside for our official decision. Here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. With scores of 29, 28, 30, 27, and 29, 28, your winner by unanimous decision, Enrique Kike Tapia. All right, congratulations to Enrique Tapia, first win.
as an amateur. Yeah, amateur debut, gets a win against a, a pretty seasoned guy uh, who's very skilled. You can see, that, you know, Jack Martinez was very skilled, but Enrique Tapia was ready for this debut. Gotta love it, man. That picture must feel so good to get that first win. Your camp excited for the win. Let's go inside to Wayne for our sixth fight of our prelims. All right, we have time for one more preliminary match before we go live on UFC Fight Pass. Please welcome to the blue corner, Joshua Quintero. All right, Joshua Quintero is going to be our final fight of our prelim card. So we will have a swing bout a little bit later after our main card on UFC Fight Pass. Well, Quintero making his way now to the cage in this bantamweight showdown. Third fight for Joshua Quintero, representing Mission Texas as well. He hasn't fought since 2019. He did fight at Fury FC 36 back in 2019. Feels like a decade ago. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 2019, you know, hasn't fought since 2019. Kind of like Jack Martinez in our last fight. Let's see how it affects him. I mean, he's he's looking for his first win, fighting another debut guy. It's almost a mirror image of the fight we just saw uh, as far as matchups go. Both these guys, local guys. So far, everybody on the prelim card has been uh, local, except for Xavier Young, who came from DFW. Everybody else has been, uh, been from around here. Let's get a chance to meet his opponent. Here's Wayne. Please welcome to the red corner, Ricky Iracheta. Ricky Iracheta, debut as you mentioned, fighting out of Edinburgh. He's been training with some good dudes in fight camp. Man, I was looking at some of his Instagram posts. I stalk on Instagram. Shout out to all, all the fighters who update their Instagram. Thank you so much for making our job a little bit easier. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fury Fighting. But man, he has just been in there grinding, excited to make his debut, and we're excited to see this debut. Yeah, Ricky Arachata fighting out of Edinburgh, Texas, Rio Grande Valley Fighting Alliance uh, under Jeff Fong. Always love debut, guys. You never know. We never know when we're going to see history. You know, somebody called John Jones' debut. Somebody called Uriah Faber's debut. Somebody called BJ Penn's debut. I mean, it's one of those things where you're never, you never know who you're going to be calling, and we may be looking up in five years and seeing the next big superstar. Yep. Our tale of the tape brought to you by MikeTheTruth.com. This Phantom Weight showdown to 26-year-old Joshua Quintero, weighed in at 138 pounds, even on the height reach advantage, even as well as 70 inches. The 22-year-old Yurashetta making his debut getting his final check up here. Mouthpiece is good. Can't forget your mouthpiece in your debut. That would be tragic. Yeah. You would notice it was missing very, very quickly. And here we go. Basically a mirror image of a different way from the fight we just had. Let's yeah. see how it goes. Hopefully it's as exciting as the last one. Let's go inside the way for our introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Private Label is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 140 pounds. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands 5 feet 10 inches tall and he weighed in at 138 pounds even. Fighting out of Mission, Texas. Today he seeks his first win as an amateur. This is Joshua Quintero. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This striker stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, and he weighed in at 139 pounds. Fighting out of Edinburgh, Texas. Today he makes his amateur debut. This is Ricky Irasheta. Your referee in charge of the action, Frank Colosso. Let's go, Okay, our final fight of our prelim broadcast. By the way, our seventh fight will be a swing bout. Make sure 
and bookmark the Fury FC Facebook page and YouTube page if you're watching on there. We will have a swing bat after our main card, Fury FC 61, on UFC Fight Pass. <laughs> Just like the last fight, they are starting it right in that pocket, coming out explosive trading. I love it. Yep, and both the guys wearing black shorts again. One guy wearing the exact same shorts that the last two fighters were wearing. Shout out to Rufka. <laughs> yeah. Got the red gloves on for Irasheta. And Quintero in those blue gloves, by the way. Yeah, Irasheta in his debut, showing he can take a couple of punches. He's taking a couple on the chin right from the start. Ooh, wasn't able to take that one. That one knocked him right down to his butt. Jumped right back up and back in the face of Josh Quintero. Man, that was, I'm shocked that one didn't end right there just because of the way amateurs are called a little bit differently. But nonetheless, here we go. We continue on, 145 left, round one. Yeah, Irochata took a, took the punch well. I mean, it set him down for sure, but he jumped right back up. He took one more shot and then jumped right back up. Maybe he got knocked out and then the shot woke him back up and he jumped right back up to his feet and here he is getting some separation again. See, Richetta fights a little bit with his hands down. A little bit of that karate style fighter in him. See, he keeps putting his hands down. He's connecting now. Gotta be careful though, especially when you've already been dropped once. I wanna test that chin a little, a little too much here. Yeah, and testing the chin is, is a gamble, especially on your debut because you know, there's places where you can get hit, ladies and gentlemen, that it doesn't matter how tough your chin is, you're gonna go out. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it just can't be helped. The button's a real thing. Yeah, it is. Oh, nice high kick there from Irochetta. Man, these guys are just, these guys are going at it. Again, Irochetta putting those flurries together. Irochetta may be stopping his punches a little bit short instead of letting them go. Man, nice connect there. You see he's got that, ooh, nice, almost landed that head kick, went right over the top. Gotta be careful leaving that body open. Like we said earlier, those liver shots are devastating. Man. <laughs> Very exciting first round. Got to give it to Josh Quintero, maybe for that for that knockdown. Yeah, look at that punch right here. Round one highlights. Oh, these guys came out just banging. Both guys, exact same height, exact same reach, almost identical weight. Very similar fighting style. Very similar stance. You see right there, that was the button, ladies and gentlemen. It hit him right on it. Took one more shot and looked like it woke him back up. You see it there, right on the chin. Here we go. See both guys landing well. Eric did very, very well after he got knocked down, but I don't think it was enough to win that round after that knockdown. So tough, that memorable moment in a pretty even round might be enough, but we'll see if it even gets to that point. Yes. <laughs> the way these guys are throwing, man, we might have a stoppage here. Yeah, it's just one round, so that's the best thing about MMA is there's, is there's three of them. <laughs> you see here, Chetta just coming in, excited to be there. See it on his face. Richetta got to be careful grabbing with both those hands. Oh, yeah. nice shot. We saw this last week. We saw, we yeah, saw some, a, a, yeah, a, catch get, a, a kick get caught and then a devastating knockout of Oliver Jimenez on our last show. Here we go. Both guys up against the cage now. It's only been 40 seconds. It's already been two different storylines <laughs> where your cheddar look good, Quintero comes back. Yeah, your cheddar with both hands on that leg from catching that kick. Took a, 
took a little bit of punishment and then passed out some. Josh Quintero turning this into a dirty boxing match now, pressing that chin up against the chin of, of Ricky Iracheta. And Ricky Iracheta is like, he's having fun in there. He's smiling the whole time, even after exchanges. Still smiling. That white mouthpiece makes it look like he's got big glowing teeth. <laughs> And it looks like Irichetta's kind of using the cage as kind of a crutch there. He's kind of gaining some, gaining some power from pushing off the cage. Still walking him down. Quintero not backing out. I love how both guys are content with being right where they are. No, they're not trying to change that position up too much. Okay with exchanging. After this fight, by the way, UFC Fight Pass, we start our broadcast for Fury FC 61, the main card at 4.30 Central Standard Time. For those of you that are watching, get your subscription. If you already don't have it, we'll be live on UFC Fight Pass at 4.30. And here goes Iracheta trying to land a little bit. Josh Quintero landed a few punches there. Quintero fighting out of Mission, Texas, representing Flow Martial Arts. They have a couple of fighters on this card as well. Hey, finish, finish, finish. Yeah, you see Josh Quintero going in. He's, he's doling out punishment. I, I just think Iracheta is, he's not finishing those kicks. He's kind of throwing them out there. You know, not really putting anything on him. He's not turning his hips over. Went for a takedown there, unsuccessful. Didn't even know we allowed takedowns in this one. Yeah. <laughs> it was all standing so far. <laughs> but you're right, like, he, he's just, it's just like a little, just wants to get it going a little bit more yeah, for here at Cheddar. Yeah, and he's kind of flailing his arms out there, not putting a lot behind it. Round two highlights. You see it in these punches and th these exchanges, he's throwing harder, he's throwing with purpose. He's throwing, a, you know, he's kind of finishing the punches. Here he is catching that kick, takes a couple of shots there, but lands a nice right hand off of this. You see it right there. Quintero steps back just a little bit. Happy to get that foot back on the ground. So funny, like thinking about that knockout from FC60 where Jimenez was, he still stayed while holding, he stayed in there, keeping that Muay Thai background because he is such a decorated Muay Thai uh, fighter. He stayed so close to his opponent, and you saw your Cheta just taking that extra step back. It's okay. Yep. All right, final round. Quintero, your Cheta. Your Cheta smiling oh. again. Nice knockdown there. Ooh, nice head kick. Tries a standing rear naked choke from the side, unsuccessful. And now these guys are just throwing bombs on each other. Richetta got to be careful. Doesn't want to throw him, doesn't want to punch himself out. Josh Quintero is very, very staggered right now. Oh, man. Got to wonder if Iracheta has punched himself out a little bit there. He threw a lot of hard punches there. It was about a 20-second flurry there. If Quintero has anything he's been saving, right now is the time to showcase it because you're right. Ricky probably a little bit tired after that incredible, intense flurry. Yeah, just tried to take down there, and you could see it was a very labored takedown attempt. Uh, didn't change levels hardly at all. Just kind of stuck his head down. Got to be careful whenever you're doing stuff like that. Even in this position here, you're a little bit vulnerable. Richard is doing a good job of lacing that leg and then let it go. It's like he's content with being on this high crotch here. He's not eating too many body shots. Might be a good recovery hold there. Yeah, might need might have needed a minute to rest. It's just a horrible place to rest. Maybe you're trying to, you know, carry someone's weight like that. And if I were Quintero, I would get some space between them, especially if he feels like Iracheta is, is as tired as he looks. Get some space between them and start throwing some bombs. He's got about a minute left. 
This is a really tough fight to call, though, Raheel. The you know the most exciting thing, you know, both fighters have been hurt. Uh, Iracheta in the first round and Quintero in the second, and then here in the third, it's been fairly even. They've both landed. Under one minute left, final round. Let's see if Quintero has that extra push. This crowd urging both of these local guys on. It's been fireworks so far. Can we get a big finish here by either guy? 30 seconds left. Nice high kick there from Quintero. Yeah, 20 seconds left and both guys, these guys are just gonna stand there and just trade for the last 20 seconds, it looks like. And Ricky is gassed. Can something open up for Quintero? 10 seconds left. See if Erichetta can land one more big punch. And that will do it. Man, what a way to end our prelim broadcast. Both guys leaving it in the cage. What a fun round. What a showdown. Quintero, Erichetta. Let's take a look at the highlights here. That high kick from Ricky. And you know, I almost had that kicking in place, but good turnout from Quintero. Yeah, and it looks like uh, it's your... Ichirata, Irichata <laughs> might have punched himself out a little bit there in that flurry. Very, very tough. Both guys landing here. Both guys just landed all on the line, just getting in there, staying in the pocket, and just throwing bombs at each other. It's an entertaining fight. Man. And that's a big thing, right, for Ricky. All, all the work you do, the endurance work, cardio, all that. Nothing measures up to being in the final round where you have a chance to end the fight in round three and getting pushed to the point where you are all out of gas. Now you know your new breaking point, right? Yeah. Now you know where you got to get to to get better and better. That's right. And that was a fun fight, man. We go inside to Wade for our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. With scores of 29, 28, 29, 28, and 30, 27, your winner by unanimous decision, Ricky Iracheta! All right, congratulations to Ricky Iracheta. First win of his amateur career. Nice Nice work. Congratulations to him and his camp, and congratulations to all of our winners on our prelim card. We are heading to UFC Fight Pass for Fury FC 61. Caballero against Guardiola. We go live at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you join us on UFC Fight Pass. That will do it for our entire team year, and we will talk to you on UFC Fight Pass. On behalf of Michael Alexander, I'm Rahil Ramzanali. We will see you for Fury FC 61, Caballero Guardiola on UFC Fight Pass. Can't wait.